So we looked into uh, CI sickness data from the Cryosat 2 satellite over the winter now. And uh, we see that our conditions now this year in 2016 are pretty similar to what we saw in 2012, the year before the record low in the summer of 2012. And we do see three reasons. The first reason is we started with rather thin ice cover into the last uh, winter already. So our November ice sickness maps show significantly uh, thinner ice than in the years before. Then we saw the very uh, warm winter. So over the winter we had less ice growth because of warmer air temperatures in the Arctic. So a second factor that reduced the ice coverage uh, that we see now in our March maps that uh, the ice thickness is much lower in most regions of the Arctic. Only in the northernmost part of the Atlantic Ocean, north of France Strait, there we piled up a bit thicker than average sea ice. But this ice, and this is the third reason, is um, very likely to be exported to a large degree over the spring and summer. So we will lose more thick ice now in spring and summer. And these reasons, they at least favor a low sea ice extent and low sea ice thickness than in total sea ice volume uh, for the summer. But we also have to be aware that most of that story is still to be made in spring and summer when we will see how the air temperatures of the wind systems will work then. Well, things haven't started out really well for the summer. We had the lowest maximum on record, and because we had a very unusually warm winter, the ice growth appears to have been a lot less. Definitely the ocean froze up later than normal, especially over in the Barrens and the Kara Sea sector. It was probably about two months later than it normally is in terms of when it freezes up. And estimates from Cryosat 2 suggest that the ice is thinner than it was at least last year and probably the year before as well. Um, there's also observations off the coast of Barrow that suggest the ice is quite a bit thinner there than it has been in several years. So we're not starting out the winter season very well in terms of the thickness of the ice and the total extent of the ice. But that said, just because we have maybe thinner ice and we have less sea ice right now starting out the melt season, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have a new record low. Um, and part of the reason why is even though um, how thick the ice is is important as to how much ice can survive the summer melt season, the summer weather is still really important. And so um, we can't predict the weather, so we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. But we do know we had a warm winter and it, the warmth has continued into spring. If you look at air temperatures for the first three weeks of April, for example, the temperatures are you know, four to five degrees Celsius warmer than normal over the whole Arctic Ocean. So you're already starting out a spring that's, that's quite warm as well. So the melt season is kicking in and just depending on how that continues, I think is gonna play a key role, but certainly having thinner ice to start out with is not a good thing. So this winter we've seen very warm conditions in the Arctic, the air temperature has been very warm, which means the ice has not grown as much as it does normally, which means we're left now uh, at the start of the summer season um, with much less ice than we do normally. Whether this means we'll get a record low year later on in September when the ice reaches minimum depends quite a lot on what the atmosphere does over the next few months, how many storms we get across the Arctic, they will help break up the ice. So it depends on how many of those we get as to whether this year will be record or not. Um, so I'm not specifically working on pr uh, seasonal predictability, which would be needed to really predict what's happening this summer, but based on uh, the work that I've been doing with climate models, um, we know that there's a lot of internal variability, so just variability um, in the climate system due to weather and long-term climate patterns um, that really uh, makes it difficult for us to predict um, seasonal or Arctic sea ice on, on many time scales. And so um, based on that, we don't really know very well when we'll see another sea ice new sea ice minimum. We know pretty well that as long as we continue to emit greenhouse gases, we will continue to see a decline in Arctic sea ice. So we will eventually see a new record sea ice minimum in September. Um, but we can, it's very difficult to predict when exactly that will happen. And even if we have a couple years of sea ice that does not hit a new record or maybe even goes up again a little bit, does not mean that we're not losing Arctic sea ice in the long term.